This is a short movie by the Irish Stem Cell Foundation which seeks to educate people about what stem cells are and what they can do for us. The human body is composed of over 200 cell types, each designated to a particular function. So for example, a pancreatic cell is involved in the function of the pancreas and the nerve cell is involved in the function of either the brain or spinal cord. A subset of cells, however, are different. These are called stem cells. Stem cells have the capacity not only to make more stem cells, but also to make different cell types. For example, a skin stem cell can make all the cells of the skin. A muscle stem cell can make all the cells of the muscle. And a blood stem cell can make all the cell types of the blood. For many years, adult stem cells have been used therapeutically in the treatment of certain cancers and rare blood diseases. Broadly speaking, there are two types of stem cells, embryonic stem cells that can generate all cell types of the human body, and adult stem cells that have a more limited repertoire. Embryonic stem cells are derived from excess embryos that are left over from assisted fertility treatments, like IVF. The embryos that would otherwise be destined for medical waste are harnessed to study human disease and development in the laboratory. It is important to realize, however, that scientists do not make embryos purely for research purposes. Rather, they use the embryos that would otherwise be destined for medical waste. For example, in the treatment of diabetes or, say, motor neuron disease, there the problem is that there doesn't appear to be an adult stem cell that can make insulin secreting cells of the pancreas, for example, or like motor neurons that uh, are lost in motor neuron disease. Scientists and clinicians, in order to find out what's going wrong and to fix what's going wrong, they need the type of stem cell that can generate the cell type relevant to the disease. So in certain instances, embryonic stem cells are needed. People frequently think about how stem cells can be used directly to treat disease. For example, for many decades, bone marrow and the stem cells they contain, blood stem cells, have been used in the treatment of certain cancers and rare blood diseases. Scientists and clinicians today are even more excited about the indirect use of stem cells as research tools. We can learn more about how stem cells make different cell types, we can use cells derived from stem cells to make better and more effective drugs. So stem cells are, in essence, a source of different cell types that you can use to generate new drugs and learn more about how disease happens. You know, it's frequently said in the media that embryonic stem cells are no longer required because of the advent of a new technology called induced pluripotent transduction. Um, and, and this is simply not true because embryonic stem cells will always be needed to study early human development and pathologies and diseases associated with those early stages of development. Back in 2007, scientists discovered that if they introduce certain genes into a cell, they can make a cell forget what it is so that it reverts back to something like an embryonic stem cell. So it's in a, in a way it's a little bit like hitting someone in the back of the head and they forget that, that they're a particular type of person and they have to relearn what kind of person they are again. But sometimes memories re-emerge and this is really where the state of the research is now can we make a cell completely forget what it was? And can you sustain that amnesia long term within the cell? This new induced uh, pluripotency transduction is a very, very new technology. And we're still trying to find out, you know, uh, how we can make cells forget what they are so that they 
revert back to this uh, stem cell like state. But really it's too early to say for a lot of applications whether embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells will be better in future. The Irish Stem Cell Foundation is basically a collection of doctors, scientists, patient advocates, patients and policy makers that are joined together by uh, their expertise in some facet of uh, stem cell biology, either looking at how these cells can be used therapeutically, how they can be used as a research tool, what kind of ethics do we need in order to make sure that you know good re research proceeds. We also need to understand the needs of patients and we also need to understand the consequences of not having good legislation pertaining to this area and how that affects not only the science and medicine in this country but more importantly the patients in this country. Mm -hmm.